1974 started off happily for artist Judy Seidman. She married British historian Neil Parsons, who she'd met while visiting her family in Zambia, where her younger sister Neva was working for the African National Congress. But 1974 would also bring about a rude awakening and Seidman's first contribution to the struggle for liberation in South Africa. The couple relocated to Swaziland, where Neil was appointed as a lecturer in 1975. Seidman still contributed posters and design to the ANC in Lusaka. Seidman remembers whispers in Swaziland on June 16, 1976, that police opened fire on school children in Soweto in neighboring South Africa. The struggle next door, as she describes it in her autobiography, renewed the understanding that, quote, if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem, unquote. Safely behind walls of class, race, and nationality, Seidman realized that she could no longer be a mere observer. She felt that inaction meant that one condoned and perpetuated the oppression of black South Africans. Okay, tell me how you balanced your okay. your 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 life as a, as a mum, uh, a wife okay. uh, during this period as well. Yeah. Well, the balancing as a wife was not very successful. I ended up getting divorced. <laughs> um, so my first daughter was born in seventy eight in Swaziland. Um, a quite a difficult um, early childhood for various reasons. She had a physical. Actually, it turned out to be a gluten problem, oh. but it meant she didn't. She she screamed a hell of a lot at the time. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> um, and it in, certainly interfered with my artwork, and it just I didn't have time to take care of her as much as I should have and do the artwork. And if for the short time when she was sleeping, if you got your hands thoroughly covered with paint and things, and then she woke up and screamed, yeah. it takes you 10 minutes to get the paint off in order to pick up the yeah, child, and by easy. the time, it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> Believe me, it doesn't work very easily. My second child was born just after we got to Botswana, and there was always a little bit of a issue about how much time I could spend with the family and go to meetings and things like that. And the issue because of your work or Just, safety concerns? Uh, safety concerns actually be, were probably, they were an increasing issue. And um, what did you fear? I mean, what were you hearing at okay, that stage? So, well, to give you an example, mm. my daughter Annie, my older daughter's best friend at that time was Katrine Schoon. And they went to a nursery school in what would be called the township if it was South Africa. Mm. Katrine's parents were both ANC and Communist Party, and her father, Moya Schoon, had spent quite a long time in jail, and her mother had been detained at one stage. And they were regularly under pressure. My husband, one of the tensions in my marriage, my husband was a wonderful person and completely sympathized, but he was clearly getting from his close Botswana friends that this was going to be a dangerous connection. Mm. And he occasionally said, maybe I should be so close to them, which I refused to accept. In, I think it was December 83, there was an attempt, an assassination attempt on Moyes. Somebody came to the house with a gun. Moyes was in like 9 or 10 in the morning. Moyes wasn't there. The childminder was there with the, the newborn baby. They couldn't find anybody and left, so nobody was hurt. But then Moyes and Jenny, actually, the kids stayed at my house for the next couple of days because they were afraid that there would be another attack. But then they went, they moved to Angola. Katrine and Jenny were killed by a letter bomb in Angola about six months later than that. So it was a very real fear. And in terms of the kids, I always feel I survived for two reasons. One was because... I had a certain amount of privilege being white, being a woman, and having an American passport. And we were very aware of that. Um, there were several times when there were discussions, was it safe for me to do one, two, three, four? And sometimes it was decided it was, and sometimes it wasn't. So in 1987, mm -hmm. December 1987, my ex-husband's house got petrol bombed. 
We're not quite sure why his place was petrol burned, mm. and we're not sure whether they knew it was empty at the time. He had gone to a conference that the kids were staying with me. The petrol bomb hit the kids' room and burnt it out. If they had been there, they would not have survived. Mm. And we decided it was not safe to keep the kids in South Africa, in Botswana, Southern Africa. Do you ever, do you ever regret being involved in the movement, considering what could have happened to, the, to your family, to what, what you saw, and the fact that you had to let your kids go for a little bit? I mean, do you look back and think, I could have done this differently? I don't, because I actually feel... I mean, I, I wonder if my kids, some, on some level, feel I could have been with them more. I mean, I, I did visit them when they were in England. They were in England for, I guess, four and a half years. Mm. I tried to visit them every three months at least, or, and occasionally they would visit me. They've always said that they accepted the fact that this was part of my life. They couldn't, they wouldn't back off from it. And they, that, that's who I was, that's who they are. Um, and I thank them for that. <laughs> I always felt, given the world that we're living in, I was certainly taking far less chances than many of the people I, li mm -hmm. I, I lived and worked with at that point and cared about, for that matter. And if I didn't take those chances, and I, I mean, if I, if I stopped doing the work that I cared about, mm -hmm. then my life wouldn't have been worth much. The usual denial was, I'm just a woman and I've got kids and I can't be involved in something like that. Even if, of course, you're involved in it up to your neck. Yeah. I mean, I had a few rules. One of the rules I tried to enforce in my house when my kids were there was I didn't want guns in the house. Mm -hmm. 